Welcome to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. It's uh, January 1948, I believe, and I just wanted to take a moment to reflect on the previous battle, episode 54, in which the Scharnhorst sank three British cruisers in rapid succession to gain two prestige points, uh, drive down unrest very temporarily from six to five that then popped back up to six again because Britain, uh, Germany is still blockaded and you know I was thinking aside from the obvious genius of my admiralship what on earth happened to make Scharnhorst such a killing machine? Um, the first of the sort of positive factors is that the crew are elite. I think, I think it's easy to underestimate the significance of having an elite crew because it just does everything better. It does damage control better. It does following orders better. It does fire control better. It does everything uh, better. So there's quite a buff across a whole range of uh, ship performance qualities that responds to crew quality. Um, it's got six battle stars worth of experience. I don't know if that's uh, worth anything other than, you know, pleasantness. Uh, something for the old sailors to talk about in the bar. It does have battle damage doctrine, so its hits would be lessened by that. But I don't think the British scored very many hits on the Scharnhorst in this engagement. The captain, he's only average. Now, he's been there. 12 years since 1939, which is, you know, going some, but, I don't know, eight years. Sorry, maths. Um, killer is this 5.78% hit chance. Let's call it 6% or nearly 6%, sake of argument. 65 main battery hits on the three cruiser targets. I think... There was an element of good fortune with that, but we'll discuss that in a moment. It also was well protected. Six inches armor belt, um, two inches of deck armor. Significantly better than the British armored cruiser, and of course much, much better than the two British light cruisers. We had electro-optical director, but then so did the British, and radar tech four. Um, now the British, this is from the... Andromeda, the heavy cruiser that got sunk, it was only average crew quality, so two lower down. Um, heaven knows what battle experience it has or what doctrine the British are using, or indeed the quality of the captain. Um, they only had 2.24, two and a quarter hit rate, and they only scored eight hits with their main battery. Their armor scheme was two thirds the protective quality of the Scharnhorst, and I think that really showed. Um, it also had an electro-optical director, and the radar was advanced, but that's hard to... I had to look under research to give a clue whether that was as good as or worse than the Scharnhorst, but I couldn't really understand that. I think, crucially, they got two sets of critical hits about 30 minutes into the engagement, first the bridge, and then the fire control were destroyed, and then after 70 minutes, it capsized under the repeated volley of hits, hit after hit after hit by the Scharnhorst. Now, it did help that the Scharnhorsts were 9-inch guns to the Andromeda's 8, uh, and Scharnhorst has, uh, I think, 9 of them compared to the 6 on the Andromeda. Likewise, and Thank you to those of you who are really sharp-eyed in these things and really look at the logs who noticed that the, the second British cruiser with nine six-inch guns, which is still, you know, a thing, uh, suffered a flash fire in the turret that knocked out two of its turrets. So that would have explained a lot of why it suffered... Um, an ineffective return to fire, and the third British cruiser only had five inch guns as an anti aircraft cruiser, so not really in the Scharnhorst's league. So it would seem, principally, my own magnificent admiralship notwithstanding, that primarily two great critical hits on the Andromeda and one great critical hit on the six inch cruiser, uh, Commerce, I think it was, 
may well have explained, and just the simple overpowering of the uh, anti-aircraft cruiser would have explained why we were able to sink three cruisers and get such an epic victory. Well done, us. Next up, let's have a look where we are now. So yeah, January 48. It's been a long, a long year with all the battles we fought over these past 13 months. We're still blockaded, naturally. If we have a look at the Almanac, we'll see that we still have four battle cruisers in operation. Two are being repaired, unfortunately. And it's some of our carriers' air groups are being rebuilt. So I'm going to decline big fleet battles this month to allow time for the battle cruisers to get back in and particularly allow time for the air groups to reconstitute themselves properly. I've also uh, converted a few light uh, fighters, sorry, a few fighters into light jet fighters because really the only thing that fighters, piston engine fighters still give at the moment is that they are night capable. The British now have three and the French have one. Again, one of you eagle-eyed people, wonderful people, spotted that a French battle cruiser got sunk in uh, an engagement outside of our battles last turn. So there you have it. Parity with our battle cruisers, if you ignore the uh, repairs. Not to mention a couple more Italians. I know the Italians aren't necessarily fighting as a pure ally at the moment. Uh, and the Japanese have a couple, though I, I doubt we'll ever see them uh, over with us. Rough equivalents with aircraft carriers. Actually, it's probably our advantage in aircraft carriers, if you include the Italians. Uh, disadvantage in light carriers, but I'm never bothered with that. Again, we've got four heavy cruisers. They only have three. So they are significantly losing their edge in terms of blockade strength. And if we go to the map and zoom in to Northern Europe and ask to see the strength monitors, we can see, okay, there's us. That would be bigger if our two uh, bath cruisers were in, um, in service. And indeed, if the Scharnhorst was, um, oh, sorry, the Prince Eugen was back in service as well. So, we're, you know, should be bigger than Britain. Now, not as big as Britain and France combined, but nonetheless, the balance is going our way. In the meantime, we are pursuing this two-pronged strategy, as I, I discussed in some of the comments last time, because your comments prompted me to think, what on earth am I doing here? Because of the suggestion, Dickie. You're keeping on, you know, auto building four submarines, full submarines every month now. Surely you could turn that off. I've got nearly a hundred. And the short answer is no. Uh, because one prong of my strategy is the submarines. Those U-boats are war winning. They are grinding down Britain and France. They are causing food shortages at any moment. One or other or both could sue for peace. Yes, it's in a ghastly starvation race with ourselves, who are equally suffering under the Allied blockade, but it's the U-boats that will bring Britain and France to the negotiating table. The second prong is the surface fleet, and its victories are buoying up national morale. Yeah, our um, unrest level has popped back up to six, but without the significant success of the Scharnhorst last turn, that could be seven. So each victory from the fleet is keeping a lid on the level of unrest, allowing us to fight for longer. Equally, I presume, because you don't see, each significant defeat for Britain and France will be increasing their unrest level. So. Surface fleet and U-boat fleet are working together to let us fight longer and encourage the British and French to fight shorter. So that's the hope. Currently, uh, we are in debt 4,000, but our construction at the moment is 11,000. So 
once the Lutzau and some of these destroyers, particularly the Lutzau, comes out, you know, Lutzau is already 500 of rebuilds. And if we can, you know, not go crazy with the number of ships that are in repair, we can bring down that construction figure to um, one where we can keep going with this for a long time. As it is, we can easily go four or five months. So that's great. So that's my strategy, and that's, I think, where we're at. I'm pretty pleased with it. It certainly feels like victory is in our grasp, even though it's a difficult and long and grinding occasion. So let's press the turn button, and bear in mind that I want to avoid really big battles. So here's one in an undesirable location. It's a convoy attack. Oh, I love convoy attacks. They often have the opportunity for big stuff, but let's see what our intelligence says about uh, what's gonna happen in this battle. Okay, so we have two battle cruisers, three aircraft carriers, two heavy cruisers, and one, two, three, four, divisions of destroyers. Oh, and some light cruisers. So not quite, but nearly the full battle. Against this, estimated enemy forces in the area are just a couple of light cruisers and a bunch of uh, CVLs. Expected forces, some battleships and supporting forces. Hmm. I'm not sure how the estimated forces and the expected forces in this area actually marry up. Uh, oh, well, that's the thing. So it says this is Western France, 270, and Iceland, which bizarrely is a French colony. So this is against the French Navy, and the French Navy only have one battle cruiser. So ordinarily, I would perhaps not fancy this because I want those battle cruisers to rest. I don't want them to be damaged. But in this case, yeah, let's, um, let's accept it and see what is what. Some offensive mine lane never really helped. Uh, attack ships in general, sure, why not? And boom, here we are. And let's set the speed to ultra fast. Uh, it's daylight, dusk will be in two hours and 45 minutes. So just a little bit of time, actually similar to the Shan Horse battle, just a little bit of time to make a bit of a difference uh, and then sneak away under the cover of darkness, which I kind of like. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, weather limits air operations. So that's a bit of a bugger. Let's see what is what, well, just no air operations. There's no speed restrictions as such. Let's have a look at the carriers. Yeah, okay. I thought there'd be a message here, but no, it's just up there. So uh, tricky what to do with the carriers, given they can't do very much. Now, there's an unidentified ship here, which uh, is spectacularly close to my force, as in, 10,000 yards away, so I'm not quite sure how that one spawned there, but there we go. It feels like I probably should prepare um, strikes. Weather does not permit aircraft launches, but I can get some of them uh, arrayed on the flight deck and wait for something to happen. Or we already are in the happening mode and we should just, you know, go and explore this ship. We're expecting a convoy. The convoy target is there. So, so it's a bit confusing why this unidentified ship is here already. But, hmm. Oh, yes. Let me have a think. Okay. So I've asked the aircraft carriers to ready some strikes, even though we can't launch anything. If something appears and the weather for air operations does improve, I want them to be able to launch those strikes instantaneously. I've asked the Blucher and the Scharnhorst that are screening and scouting to go off and identify this unidentified ship if necessary. The Graf Spey and the Graf Stauffenburg will go and pay a visit too. They're only 
9,900 yards away, they should be able to say what sort of ship this is pretty shortly. I suspect that actually this diversion will become unnecessary and that they will head on towards our target, which is just over here, um, a few miles away, 20 miles away. So let's just push it forward a minute at a time. Um, we've already um, started shooting. Um, some of the destroyers are struggling with uh, fuel, as indeed is the uh, the von Richthofen as well. So best not to go crazy on the speed. Well, that seems to have stopped. Whether that's like a merchant ship or something, I'm not quite sure, but it uh, it's all not gone well for it, whoever it is. So I'm going to tell these guys just to uh, hold fire for uh, 10 minutes. I, they hold fire permanently. I'll just forget that they're even shooting. Oh, they're still doing something. Okay, slightly moving. Still no idea who it is. So let's get the Blucher and the Shaun Horse to just chase it down, whatever this ship of mystery is. Oh, it seems to be going in a circle. All right, so in the spirit of saving fuel, I'm going to bring the Blucher and the Shan Horse down to uh, 20 knots. Uh, here are the strikes readying. That should be great. And let's bring cruisers over. Still can't believe, I mean, you know, the daytime sighting is 15,000 yards. They're at 11,000 yards and they have no idea, no idea what ship they are firing at. Let's bring this over to line ahead. Scout to independent for the moment. Right, so it's an Anson class battlecruiser. What? So, A, this is supposed to be the front. Well, I suppose they could be like a visiting ship and they're not really part of the main force, but still very unexpected. Um, so, yeah, slight change of plan. Um, so, squad max, bring that round. Did I say, yeah, the. Um, Luckily, the hold fire has gone completely off. Still no air operations, but now we have uh, an altogether different uh, kettle of fish. So for these guys, these want to rev up and they probably want to turn around. They are a little bit close, um, if truth be told. Whereas these guys might want to, um, no, not do the screening, do the support, uh, come out of that. Go into line ahead and just go and make the Anson turn away. Yeah, that's a bit unexpected, as in very. And it was, it was almost as if the Anson was asleep. So let's see if we can get into any kind of destroyer position here. They are, yeah, maxing. These are absolutely maxing. This as well. Whilst these boys come down to uh, meet it. I'm noticing the Graf Spey already has a turret see what's happened that a turret destroyed from one hit from the anson ouch that's very out actually so yeah this anson is not to be completely sniffed at i don't suppose we are in any kind of torpedo nope we're out of arc for torpedoes encouraging the Anson 
to uh, turn away. We've got low, but let's still fire a low. Uh, just to, you know, discourage it further. Uh, and then the Blucher can come round, but really the Blucher and Scharnhorst shouldn't be engaged in this kind of thing. Now, whilst all that's happened, these are all charging on, so I probably, they're at cruise speed. I want to probably just bring down a little bit slower. And then these, I might want to just put onto patrol so that they just hang around. The wind, it's obscured up here, but it's from the, um, oh, cool. sorry, I got the wrong screen on. Uh, the wind is from the east, pretty much. So if we encourage the carriers to go west for a while, probably a good thing. Um, I'm just going to carry on with the light cruisers because So let's just see that low probability chance for uh, torpedoes has suddenly got very exciting. I think it's going to properly comb them, but you know, fair enough. Oh, or not. Well done. That was a bit of a, you know, low probability hit. Um, now, whether that's going to have a significant impact on speed or not, I don't know, but I do rather like that. So, uh, Scharnhorst, I think, needs to come round. Both need to come round. And I think the Blucher also probably needs to come round. And these guys, they need to go and chase. Now, the Anson's maximum speed is 30 knots obviously that may have been curtailed uh, so down for this actually these can go back onto automatic as can these that was fantastic All right so the bath cruiser needs to cut in the Blucher needs to cut in. The Scharnhorst going on south now needs to go north. Yeah, I think we need to actually steer a steady course and see if we can just close the range. Now the range is 14,000. So if we just have a look at the graph Spey, the gun data at 14,000 can penetrate 14 inches of armor, 1.8 of deck. If we have a look at the Anson, that has uh, 12 inches of belt, 5 inches of deck. So probably just wants to go a bit chasey. Now, given that, and given that I'm... Oh, I was going to say, given that I'm not seeing a convoy, I'm seeing a convoy. Uh, I'm also seeing... Uh, hmm. Okay, I'm going to take the Scharnhorst out of this and send it north. Uh, can't do anything with the carriers other than keep them out of the way. Oh, and there's some more there, crikey. It's all happening. Hmm. Okay, Scharnhorst, go see what that stuff is. It's all getting a bit... A bit tight. Okay, so the Anson is coming a bit south, so we can go a bit south too. Try and bring our rear guns to bear. Yeah, the Anson's a bit all over the place. Ooh, so uh, a hit from Scharnhorst. Well, of course, Scharnhorst can hit anything. And from Stauffenburg uh, and from the Graf Spey. So uh, well done, lads. Um, so this claims to be heavy cruisers. 
again, you know, the range is only 13,000. Yes, they're picking them up on radar. Um, I'm, yeah, low clouds, dead calm. I'm, I'm not seeing things like glare and things like that that would somehow, I, I doubt that these are all cruisers. They all see, seem to be swinging around in a way that looks suspiciously um, like they are destroyers. Right, so that's got the rear guns shooting away. Need to check. Yeah, so let's just bring these to the south. And then what's going on here? Uh, it says heavy cruisers and what have you. And this says uh, yeah, anything. Macho, macho, unidentified. I zoom out, it seems to say that they're light cruisers and those are carriers. Uh huh. So I'm sort of minded to actually break off that because it's too confusing to have them and the carriers and the battle cruisers and the Scharnhorst, whatever these are. So I'm going to concentrate at one prize at a time. Now, Given that the time is an hour and 45 minutes to dusk, I'm going to let go those uh, because they just risk being overpowered and bring that back and uh, yeah. focus on what of earth all of this is. And the Sean horse out of way. So these are three destroyers and a CA. And the blue these are going too far away, so let's do that. Ooh. Another hit. Uh, so the Sean horse taking a bit of a battering, so we really don't want that. I'm going to put these onto AI control so that they roughly stay in that area. Let's just check 16%. That's fine. I mean, not thrilling, but fine. Now the Anson is going in that direction. I really don't know what's going on with visibility when this range is only 18,000 and daylight sighting. Oh, okay, daylight sighting is 18,000. It must be one of those kind of slightly hazy days uh, in the middle of January. Okay. So we've got the light cruisers coming back, we've got the carriers coming back under control, and we've got the battle cruisers sorting out this Anson class battleship. So let's focus on them, but we will have to split our time between all of them. Taking the Scharnhorst uh, into safety after its magnificent performance in the last battle, it would be very, very sad. We just need to turn the battle cruisers to bring the rear turrets in to uh, operation for the Graf Spey. That done it? Yes. And Luca, so we can turn the Scharnhorst, which is now at 18,000. Okay, so we'll bring the Scharnhorst round and point it the same way as the Luca. Let's make the speed minus two from the maximum. Same with the Luca. To just sort out that, check how the carriers are doing. Yep, they're all together, which is fab. And yeah, they can just mill about. I'm not sure milling about at 10 is great, but they haven't got any air operations. Light cruisers are coming in, so we'll send them to just above where this lot is. There are still this lot. I don't know if they're chasing. No, they don't really seem to be chasing. I'm going to say no for that. And let's go back to the main action. Bring the Sean Horst round. We don't want to completely disengage because they're now at 19,000, which is beyond the maximum range of the nine inch guns of the Sean Horst and the Neisenauer. Uh So I managed to straddle and hit twice last turn they've got 
uh, three for the Graf Spain. For some reason, nothing whatsoever for the uh, Stauffenburg. Let's see if that sorts itself out. No? Hmm. Isn't Stauffenburg firing? It's got no damage whatsoever. Are we outside of maximum range or something like that? So we can go to 29,000. I'm pretty sure we're not at 29,000. Turrets are all pointing in the right way. Let's go back. And there's no hit chance at the moment. Offenburg. Yeah, turrets are pointing right. And we are shooting at 19,000. So I'm guessing it's because it's unidentified. Everyone's forgotten that it's a battleship. So are we, we are at max. Uh, I'm going to turn together and head towards to get a better ID. And also, I guess, bring the cruisers back in. Blucher is also 18,000, so yeah, we need to close in order to improve hit chance. Um, all right, so Stauffenburg opens fire. Hooray! Let's just bring that in a little bit further. We're down to 16,000. Uh, check how these bunnies are doing. He's separated again. No, they haven't, but I'm going to take them off AI because Peter Strausser is going one way and Graf Zeppelin is going another way and they're going to separate again. I can feel it. We'll also just go up to cruise. Can't help but feeling 10 knots is just a little bit pedestrian. And let's see. Still some chaps milling around there, so perhaps we'll just head to the south bit. Seems to be agreeably away, so Peter Strausser is turning. Yep, okay, they're turning, which is great. Uh, the unidentified ship is still unidentified at 15,000 yards. So I'm going to open up the arc to try and bring the rear turrets into the battle. Maybe just a tiny bit flatter. Yes, there they go. Um, well, that makes the unidentified ship of mystery, but with heavy damage and on fire. Oh, okay. So maybe I will close in just a little bit more. I just need, obviously, to be slightly concerned with these destroyers. So let's bring the Blucher and the Scharnhorst in. I want them to kill the destroyers. Yeah, they're all fine. They're all fine. They've disappeared. Okay. Back. So this does not seem to be going very fast. Uh, these all seem to be getting a bit, a bit keen. to crank up my own destroyers I'm off screen onto support and onto line ahead let's set them charging off yep looks like time to turn away um so they're not in any kind of firing position so it feels like i have to go sharp south yeah, that kind of way. Hmm, got a hit on my catapult from Mr. Unknown Ship. Okay. So we can turn back. Actually, let's just keep that. They may have just launched on a turn. This way, we don't want to get too far away. Guys are at thousands which long ish let's 
turn to comb any potential torpedoes. I want to take these destroyers now and actually them to the north and see if they can get into any kind of battle position. I'm going to take the battle cruisers inwards to try and get on this side. Check everyone else is fine. Yep, they're all fine. Check the order of battle. No one is really that bothered. Straighten up Scharnhorst. Yeah. These Derwents, are we fuck We're mainly firing the uh, unidentified battleship of mystery. These all seem to have calmed um, down a bit, so I will put them back onto automatic. Just for now. So I can't see this Anson class battleship going anywhere. This Derwent, by the way, seems to be not long for this world. Good way. Still not got all our rear turrets firing, which is annoying. I'm going to bring them all the way around. Big swerve. I know that is rubbish for the speed, but then this guy is hardly motoring. Right, I don't want these guys to go too far to the south, so. Bring them round a little bit. And take them back up and that will allow them to gather together a little bit more. Everyone else is fine. No nasty surprises. Obviously with weather limiting air operations, there could always be a mystery force that comes along. Crown Horse takes another hit. Whoops, that's destroyers. 15%. Probably just open up the distance again. These guys, I want to just go and finish off that destroyer. And nice to see Bluka is shooting at the destroyers. Donna. Oh, you know. We can um, turn together, turning together to just stop Stauffenburg being obscured by the Graf Spey from its forward arcs. Oh, for some reason, Stauffenburg has decided to detach. Bring these bad boys around, just sinking, just heavy damage. Quite close now, isn't it? It's like you take your take your eye off the ball for a minute or two, and suddenly they're only nine thousand yards away. So let's pull the blucher back out. Still can't believe that at nine thousand we have um, the ship as unidentified. It's the Elfenborg scene. That is the destroyer. And they've fired a torpedo. Good. The Stauffenburg seems to have reattached. So nice. Bring these rounds. Ah, finally, it's an Anson class again. A uh, bit of torpedoing at this Anson. Low. A bit low, but I'll mm, oh, go on. How often does a heavy cruiser get to fire its torpedoes? The, these guys are launching theirs, which is fine. These are coming along. But, yep, bring them down to 27 just to get their shooting eye in. Have a look at their um, hit chances. So one and nine for the stuff on pork. Oh, what's happened to the uh, into the graph spay there? 
Hit chance is eight, and then target aspect, target turning, boost formation, four ships firing. Ah, smoke interference minus two hundred. Yes, yeah, that will that will probably do it. Um, hmm. Well, let's hope that clears the wind. Oh, I see. So the wind is from the east. Yeah, it should be blowing that way, technically. Good for that. Let's see if... Uh... Wow. So presumably these are now both smoke interferences. Smoke interference 1,210. Yeah, I think we need to come off this angle. This is not working for us. I don't think I've ever seen that much smoke interference. Now nothing. Is this a record? 1,370. <laughs> that helps. I'm chasing, screaming ahead. So let's bring it down to 25 knots or something. Help things a little bit. Lots of torpedoes being launched in a good way. This is stopped. Okay, great. Absolutely great. Delighted with that. Here comes the Bremen, uh, who've had the dullest of dull battles. Might just... Hmm. Send them north. Uh, these are going at 18, the Bremens, etc. Yeah, they're just cruising along 18. They're all very relaxed. I mean, if I sink this Derwent, which surely must be about to sink, and, but let's turn it around just to um, absolutely make sure. Let's finish off this Anson. Ah, okay. Yes, that. Up. Well, that's another destroyer, a bonus. Okay, didn't intend that. Bang, 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 bang. Yes, that's all for the good. All slightly running out of ammo. This Anson is gone. A do them onto automatic now. Them to automatic. Bring the duke around into. Make sure I don't wander into my own torpedoes because that would be very embarrassing. Uh, the old. Graf Stauffenberg fires nine 15 inch guns on the Anson class. They straddle it and they score 10 hits. That's a good trick. <laughs> um, fine. Let's, uh, let's bring them down to actually 20 almost. Yeah, just wait for the Anson to sink. We can turn this back north again. There's the Bremen, the carriers. Just slow, actually just increase the carriers to 20 knots just so that they carry the gap. And yep, they're still on screen. So let's actually put them onto AI for that. Yeah, that should all be lovely. Hit by a torpedo, as if that was really necessary. And another. Okay. Need to be wary of theirs, so they've got a destroyer here and a destroyer there. 
them to be too much of a target for this usk. Us, so I'm just going to turn away together. Yeah. Fine. Even shooting at anybody. Oops. Select target division. Oh, I see it's over here. Ooh. Oh, not that one. That one. Just finish off him. Bring that round again. No longer in danger. No one is bothering with the Anson at all. Kind of feel, you got, yeah, you've got some torpedoes. I'm going to put you back onto manual. Uh, you have a, a proper pop. Ah, and it's unnecessary. Oh no, that was the destroyer. So go here, fire your torpedoes at the Anson. Bang. I mean, I would hate it for the Anson to, you know, miraculously repair its engines and limp away. Oof. Well, about four. One hit and three went zooming underneath. These buggers won't sink easily, will they? Right, I think we all just probably need to go sort of north. Their thing. They've joined up, the light cruisers have joined up with the carrier. Uh, we can bring that down to cruise. Or Z88 magazine hit. What was that? Whoops. Didn't expect that. Let's see if you can finish off the Anson. Oh, he's, yeah. He's a gunner. Oh, and here comes Dusk. Not quite in... Oh, yes, we are. Let's bring that in there. Fire and close. Okay. Let's go any better. Rinse and repeat. Only four torpedoes on this good old destroyer. So that should be fine. Put that back on the automatic control. Yes, yes. And two still miss. Um, right. So. Let's pop these onto scouts. No, let's do this four with the bluker. Put you on AI. Bluker. Pop you in scout for the ground spay. Go. And then be in the ground. Well, support onto AI. And then, boom, everybody can just leave. Well, I quite know why they've decided to go in a strange direction. 
So, their operations never took place, but okay, that's off we go to wherever. Let's, let's not discuss that, they're just going to leave. Uh, time elapsed, so we're just over half the time. Don't know what he thinks he's doing. And at high speed, we're all cruising. We're all, oh, okay. We're all cruising. That's going. I can feel some of these ships may have to go into internment. Just lower the speed down to. Who could object to 12? And so that's it. Um, slightly unexpected battle. I expected to intervene, intervene or intercept a convoy. It didn't appear, but that's okay. Well, well, it sort of did appear, but obviously we're distracted by the Anson class battleship. And um, yeah, that was good enough. So let's zoom in. And see what we've got. So light damage on us, fine for the carriers, medium damage on the cruisers, one destroyer unfortunately blown up. Um, they lost three destroyers and whatever the auxiliary is. Notice that. And of course the battleships. So we come out with 161,000 and they come out with 30,000 points. Um, so ship details. So the Anson was indeed the Anson. Let's see what happened to it. So, hmm, forward only sort of battleship. Not good for when you're being chased. Um, 74 heavy, 64 medium. I'm, I'm thinking they're mainly the Scharnhorst and the Blucher. A few light and six torpedoes. Now, obviously a lot of those torpedoes were a bit unnecessary at the end. Um, so starts off with good old fashioned rudder, critical hit. And then all fairly straightforward stuff. Oof, oof. Now, if you've ever wondered about crew quality and their crew quality is minus two, so they are poor. I, I wonder if they've even worked up and they've rushed this battleship into operation. Um, disorganized crew fails to limit flooding. Bang. We are an elite cruise. Uh, they are five ranks lower. We're at two, they're at minus two. So, yeah, rudder repaired, finally getting on top of some of the flooding. But the flooding returns because the crew is disorganized again. Um, yeah, this is a salutary lesson to not put your battleships into battle when the crew are a bit rubbish. And just loads more hits. I mean, clearly it's a very sturdy five inch deck, 12 inch, well, it's not, not overprotected by any means. I mean, it's a 1937 ship, so it, I don't know why its crew quality should have been so low. Uh, anyhow, uh, fires, but again, it had fire for quite a long time. So yeah, and then at half past four, it was sinking. So all of the rest of this, oh, <laughs> till five o'clock, all the torpedoes and stuff were superfluous, I believe. Okay, so that's the poor old Anson. Uh, they only scored seven hits in comparison. 
although hit percentage is quite high. So that can only be because they didn't actually fire many shells, either because they were running away and therefore they didn't have a good um, open arc for their turret, or the turrets were uh, damaged. Uh, Graf Spey, one heavy hit, one medium hit. I mean, lucky that that heavy hit destroyed the forward turret, otherwise this probably would have been a shorter battle. Uh, Stauffenburg uh, uh, didn't have anything. And then, yeah. Poor old Luca, medium damage, three heavy hits. Uh, destroying the two rear turrets. So we have first shot destroyed turret X, and then pretty soon afterwards, yeah, 10 minutes later, turret Y um, got destroyed. But, you know, 7-inch belt, 7-inch turrets, at least, you know, they didn't explode. It's always a good thing. Okay, let's close that. Funny that it says the enemy is France, so Anson must have been attached because the rest of the force was really light. I mean, actually, if we'd got in amongst the convoy, there were two light cruisers and a few destroyers. So, yeah, it could have been a bigger victory, but let's, let's, not, be, um, let's not be greedy about it. Do the force flagships. So, yeah, this is us engaging and following the Anson. And this is Envoy, who largely, slowly moved away and probably were very relieved. Excellent. Two prestige points again. Unrest level goes to five. Let's see if it sticks at five. I mean, they've had two months with two whopping great big victories, so they really can't plain. Uh, Battle of the Biscay. So we've commissioned six submarines. That's nice. And the enemy has sent out feelers through neutral nations about a negotiated peace without border changes or reparations. Well, I mean... Yeah, we're all hurting, but that does seem very generous to the British and the French, both of whom have been severely knocked back, and both of whom are experiencing large food shortages. So, yeah, I would like to end this war. The finances are getting a bit hairy, but I, it does feel... That's, that's not right. Okay, we should take the chance to end the war now. The Navy, yeah, we should not let them get off lightly. Now, there's a risk in that because it can make them go, right, it's total war to the end, to the death and everything like that. We've lost a sub and another and another, another. This is why you need six and another. Um, yeah, indecisive engagement in there. Da, 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 da. A couple more destroyers lost, so they only have 11 submarines operating. We lost five, but we gained one. Um, you need to be generating fours and five submarines a month in order to keep your submarine force good. Okay, let's just tidy up a month. Rumours of war weariness and protests in France. Hooray! Britain is building an airbase, airbase. Uh, lots more airbases. French have laid down a couple of light cruisers. They'll be lucky if they ever see that. Eel shortages delayed the construction of Lutzau by a month. Boo. That's all good. Yeah. Uh, Pan, etc., etc. Tensions between Britain and Soviet Union decrease. Boo. We are currently we currently have an edge in electronic warfare. That's nice. French have a rebellion in the Congo. That's all good. And so there we are. 
Into February. Unrest has stayed at five this time. Yeah, the weight of victories. Minus 4,000. Uh, budget, yeah, a little bit tight. Could have done with the Lutzal coming out. Reconstruction there, but never mind. So, that's it. Thank you very much. Victory feels like it's really close now, so please join me next time to see if we can defeat this alliance. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.